Alright guys, what's up? Um, we're back playing some more of that for honor. Man. Ugh, I really do like this game. I really do. Um, some of the season 3 changes they're making to the stages where you fight, I think that's really cool. Um, the new characters, especially the Highlander and the, and the Gladiator, I'm, I'm, I think I might actually try and save up some steel and get the Gladiator. Because he looks really sick. Alright. So, that being said, the match we have here. Um, strong Centurion player. Really strong player in general. Alright. And I'm going to start off with the Valkyrie. This is a character I don't play very much of. I do like playing her though. Because, you know, it's, um, it's really rewarding playing as this character. You get a lot. You, what you put in, you get a lot out of. Right? I haven't played with this character very often, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not expecting to do very well, alright? Goes for the throat, no wall touch, thank goodness. Get the grab, nice heavy, shield bash, he blocks the light. Okay, cool. Do another one. That's a thing I've been doing because I see other Valkyrie players do it, is I hit lights from downtown. And just see if they're going to walk into one of them. So, we're still walking. Nice and del Oh my goodness. The delay on the heavies there is extreme. Heavy, shield bash, sweep into a side heavy to finish it. That was really strong. I really brought that back there at the end. Alright, so now round two. What do we got? So, I'm going down to this area. This is where people normally will fight at. Right, so, let's see what we can do here. Oh, leaping pin. Nice. Goes for the grab. Goes for a second one. Tekken throws backwards and forwards. What is this? Street Fighter? Tekken or something? I want him to walk into one of those so badly. Because the one he does walk into, I'll get a free sweep. Alright. Another heavy? Oh my god. I'm, ooh, I'm playing crazy. Another heavy. That's, that was actually crazy. Okay, dodge it. Nice work. Poke. Slice. Victory. Man, took this man down with the Venom Oakwood shaft. Not bad. It's a, if you can tell me in the comments what that joke is, I'll, I'll give you a thumbs up. Alright. Backing up, leaping life really was a bad choice for me there. You do not want to do that attack on Centurions at all. You don't want to do that attack at all to begin with, unless they're out of stamina and you've already knocked them down. But if you do that attack on Centurion, he's going to tear you in half. Ugh, kinda like this. No, don't do it. Oh, shit. That was pretty sick. That was that was actually pretty sick. Is that Kano Round under there? Four. Let me find out. Let me find out. Alright, round four. Going down to the starting area over here. Um, from the first round. So, I won the first two pretty quickly. So, I want to try and, you know, bring some of that speed back. And take this round. Alright, so, again, big throw into the wall. Wall splat. He's backing off. Now, it's really interesting that he's backing off there because everyone's used to the constant pressure that the Centurion can apply on them. So it's really cool that he's applying these mix-ups. Oh my gosh. There is no mercy. Oh, went for the big throw. Goes for another throw. Big kick. Backing off again. Goodness gracious. So he's gotten used to that. Doing those lights. And he's like, okay, you're going to do those lights from downtown. Let me just charge this lunge up. Boom. Right in the Titakas. Right in the tracts of land. Good gracious. Alright, so now, final round. I need a miracle here. All right, he's made the perfect 2 0 comeback. I got to shut him down. 
Alright, big parry. Put him on the wall. He doesn't touch. I get the sweep there, so I backed off. I backed off because, you know, he had a lot of chances to throw me onto the spikes or throw me off of the ledge. He didn't do it to me, so I will not do it to him. Alright. Down the big boot. Ooh, the stab. Ouch. Goes for another guard break. Lion's claws. Looking for the wall. You can dodge that kick there. Alright. I'll try and show that to you guys later. But you can dodge that kick there. You get a window of opportunity to dodge out of the way of that. Ouch. Okay. Oh, whiff the throw. That's not good. The wall was right there, though. He could have gotten a lot more damage. I don't think he was looking for the wall right there, though. Goodness gracious. That's the mix-up from Centurion, because you can delay your heavies so late, is that if you condition them to the delayed heavies, do a fast one. I like that. His ready stance is he flips the sword around in his hand. That's pretty cool. Uh, give me a second. I gotta... I gotta move my computer back on this thing I have it set on. Because when you buy um, an Apple product, it heats up really fast. They don't like to tell people that in the brochures, right? Because they're like, why would I want to get a product that heats up like a freaking French oven? Right? But it does, man. Um, let me see if I can move closer so you can kind of hear it. Listen. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's it's fucking going, man. Almost dropped my pad. Not my my PlayStation. Not a PC. Promise. Round one. But not one of those guys. Anyhow, making the switch to Raider, I made the switch to Kensei. I switched to Kensei on reaction to the Centurion, and I was like, all right. So leading off with the stampede charge, oh my god, okay, actually with the zone attack, all of Raider's throws, if you just do a throw and they're out in the open, you get a zone attack as the confirm. Right? That's important to know. That's so important. I'm sipping wine, I'm sipping water. Relax. Not yet. It's too early in the day. Really, it's too early for oh, Come on, be responsible, guys. You're trying for the double lights. I get the parry on the zone. Put the top of block away. The, just the softest of wall touches. Right? He's trying to put that run up throw there. He gets it that time. Okay. That one there, you can see their animation. So if he's hunched over like that, throwing the zone attack, then it's time to. Um, then it's time to fucking parry it. But speaking of, dude, how scary is it to parry a raider zone nowadays? Everyone's unlocking the zone attack so it does a bunch of damage. You can't parry it, which is crazy. Anyways, so. Alright, that was a whole heavy attack I had right there. Now I'm out of stuff. So now I've got to defend. I've got to do my best to Michael Bitch being impression. Good block. Defending off the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was that was kind of funny. Because I haven't I haven't seen a Michael Bit I haven't seen a Michael Bisping fight in a while. I don't know if his ground is you know, all that. I think it's good. I just don't know if it's good enough for that jump. Anyways, big, big time. And that's the textbook Kensei thing. If you're an aspiring Kensei main, get used to doing that. Doing it, hitting them with a heavy and then fainting into a light attack. Get ready to do that, because that's really good. So I'm going for the run up through. So I'm gonna try to watch this. I've got some tech I've been working on. Slow jog. The throw. Shoot, I messed it up. That's the tech. Don't tell anybody. Slow dog in the throw. Get the back throw here. 
This didn't happen. Mortal Kombat, well, Mortal Kombat 9, you got rushed down all day long by fucking Cabal and Cyrax and Shang Tsung. Fuck. <laughs> Those characters are sick, dude. If you're a Mortal Kombat player, how would you? How much would you like to see those characters come back? Cabal, I understand people don't like him because he was cheap as hell. I used to play. I played Cabal after I saw Rio playing Cabal. I was like, that looks sick. I gotta, gotta try that. Right? So I dropped Baraka for a little bit, played Cabal, and had so much fun. Right? But, man, if you're a Mortal Kombat player, how much would you like to see those characters come back? Characters like that. You know, your Cabals, the Reptile, right? The Human Reptile and Human Smoke, not just Robot Smoke. Which I sick. Round one. Right? Anyways, leave that in the comments. Let's get into this next one. So now we're fighting the Lawbringer here. This, I think, is the best, worst matchup for Kensei. Right? Because it's a hard matchup still. Because the Lawbringer, if you're playing defensive as Kensei, the Lawbringer is like, you're playing defense? Okay, get ready for the Blitz. And you're never playing, you know, your O line is never, sorry, your D line is never O. D line is never good enough to stop the Blitz. Offensive blitz. <laughs> this is not like I don't know something like that. But anyways, yeah, Lawbringer just does so well at getting into your guard, getting past your guard with that push. And his other accessory tools. Just, oh man, I was looking for that light. I wanted to parry that so hard because my life was on. Get the throw. And I was looking for the wall touch there. I didn't get it. I was really disappointed by that. Oh, and I took the bait because my stamina was almost back. Ugh. What you want to do there, as the Kensei versus the Lawbringer in that situation, is you just want to start backing up. Because if you back up from his push, right, you eliminate the push option. If you get hit by the push, back up, because that eliminates the heavy option hitting. And if the heavy does tag, the follow-up unblockable or light should be the follow-up light again easy to parry. The follow-up unblockable. Back step that and you should be safe. Oh, I took the bait, but then he mistimed his parry. That sucks. Excuse me. Just sip a song. Alright, you put him on Moon Slayer and he's not dead. Oh, the Lawbringer has so much health. It's absolutely crazy. Alright, so I've got my stamina back. I'm going to start backing off, which I think is really smart. Because if you've been looking at how I've been playing, I've been playing super aggressively. Right? So he's looking to make me come to him. He went for a parry there. That's why he got hit by that. If you mistime your parry, you'll... If you mistime a parry, you'll still get killed. But... And this is my conclusion. If you mistime a parry, the opponent will hear the sound that you blocked it, but you will still die. Ow, nice life attack. I respond in kind. Alright, went for a top heavy. Just throwing some heavies at him. Trying to see what he's about. Alright, nice push in the light. Ow, stunning tap. Get off me. Get the parry on that heavy. Alright. Um, definitely. Um, if you see me not going for a lot of parries on those heavies, it might be really easy to see and 
If you pick up the game and you learn how to parry, you'll be able to parry just about anything because the game is that easy. But, oh my gosh, I went for it again. I was trying to be cheeky. Got another parry. Alright, cool. So I'm out of stamina. Really, when you're out of stamina, the worst thing you can do is parry. Because you cannot faint when you're out of stamina. So if you go for a parry, you are committing to a heavy attack. If they faint, you're gonna get hit. And it's, you're gonna get hit hard. Alright? Make the solid block there. Don't block the second one. I didn't block that one because I thought the top light was coming, so I wanted to parry it. So I could get my stamina back faster, but you know, I mistimed it, so I got hit hard there. Anyways, nice push, leading in the pressure. Alright, backing off. Really smart play from this lawbreaker. I really like that. He's really picking his shots. Out. Getting hit with a light attack, backing up. Nice. I like that because, see, now he has almost full stamina and I'm out of stamina. See, and there it was right there. So, I had been pairing his light, I had been pairing the heavies from that the whole time. So then, the one time he was like, okay, he's been pairing these, let me faint it. And that right there is a good example of why it's bad to parry when you're out of stamina. Because it might be a faint. If it's a faint, against this character, against the Lawbringer, oh, you're toast. He's dodging up for a throw. Coming in for another throw, misspaced it, I get a throw in kind. And I get the execution out of it. Victory! Round five. Alright, that was nice. Alright, fifth and final round here against this lawbreaker. So what he's doing I really like. He's making a lot of space. And he's been and he's taking advantage of how antsy that I've been playing this match. Right? Because I've been playing really offensively, trying to get in there. Trying to really hurt him, right? So now, I'm trying to, at the end, I'm trying to kind of ease off the gas, so to speak. I don't want to put too much in, but at the same time, I don't want to just sit back and have to wait for him. Because I know that the more I wait, the better that character gets, right? And in the final round, I don't want to push it to a draw game. And I don't want to give him the next stage. Right. Said I'm gonna hit with this heavy here. The lights. It was a really good exchange for me there. Nice push. That was the attempt for the flip. I think. Okay, so flip. Good option because he hadn't done it the entire set. Oh, and he got out of range there. That sucks. Because he was about to trade. I think what would have been really good was instead of the flip, Victory. the dash up and then did the flip. That was nice. But instead of doing that which has a lot of startup, if he did the dash up and then the throw, that would have been brilliant. Alright? Definitely. Um, so, and at the end there, um, what he was doing, that's a thing I like to do as my Lawbringer too, is at the end, if you're just far enough away, if you're outside of their reach, throw out a heavy, right? you're going to throw that heavy out, and when you throw that heavy out, you're going to follow it up with a light attack, and then when that light attack comes out, if they get hit by that light attack, then you go for the heavy, feint it, and then guard break them. All right? So it'll be side heavy, light, heavy again, but you'll feint that heavy and go for a throw attempt. And it's really good on enemies who are out of stamina because they're already used to like, okay, so I'm either going to parry this here. Okay, I got hit by that. So I'm gonna heavy. I'm going to parry that. If they swing Round at that, one. one, you're going to be grabbing them in the startup of their heavy. Or, if you feign it and stand still, and you see that they swung, you can parry them for your uh, judge and jury. Oh, God. The leaping, the leaping Leonidas, I'm going to call it that. I'm going to call it something. Give me a minute after they go. Whack. Uh, left hook. Goes for the throw, shoulder check, right hook. Goodness gracious. Beat down in the middle. That was absolutely brutal. 
two. Alright, that was a strong round from him. Definitely a strong round. So I've got to make... So definitely, that was a really good answer back from the last game. And now he might have lost the last game. That was a really strong answer back. Alright, so... Just... Really, you have to appreciate how he's playing the match. He's sitting right outside the range. Gets the wall. Just barely dodge out of the way of the punch there. And really, you have to try to avoid some of these moves. Alright, nice. Get the Eviscerator. That's one of my favorite executions Three. from this character. The eviscerator? Is so cool. Anyhow. So, we're gonna stand over here. I'm gonna wait for him because I don't want to fight on that bridge because as much as I um, like to say that uh, he's made a good thing about not throwing me off any cliffs or anything like that, I don't want to have the uh, possible opportunity to do that to him. I also don't want to fight a centurion on the bridge because his throws all push off a bridge. Forward throw off the bridge. Side throw off the bridge. Back throw off the bridge. It's nuts. Alright. He's not going for a lot of these parries. And that's really surprising. But that's the wall. Nice. Big throw. Okay, nice throw break. Back and forth. Headbutt carnival. Okay, he goes for the head, just the raw heavy. Look at my sword. Eat it. That was a really, that's really nice. I like that execution. That's really good too. Because it's like the slow and creeping death. It's like, get ready, here it comes. Bam. Look at the monster that is the centurion though. Isn't that cool? That is, dude, that's scary. You walk on the battlefield and like, it clears as a circle and then he walks out at you. Oh man. Right. So, go on the throw there. The pummel, nice. It was a smash run. Dodge around it, too slow to get the throw. I want to get the throw there into the wall for a top light, because that's confirmed when you're out of stamina. Alright, so I'm applying a lot of pressure there. And I'm feigning that because I don't want that to accidentally be the one that he does parry. Because I let it go last round. So, good blocks are being Alright. Now, I saw that the wall was there, but in the Round heat of the moment, five. I did not notice the wall. So, I went on as if there was no wall there. So, I just went side heavy and then try to fake him out for the top light finish. That was really good. Um, it could have been a lot better. It could have been much better. But, still, a win's a win. We did good. But, coming in with the leaping top round. Right. Pride of Olympus. That's what I'm calling it. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Nice launch. Sidestep. Throw in the wall. That should be a kill. Yes, it is. That was really good. Those are some really, really good games. That's a lot, especially if you're a Centurion player. Take some notes on that. Here's some turn player. Take some notes on that. See what he did there. That was really good. Um, longer range characters as a centurion, you want to kind of sit outside their range. That way you can make them swing and you get those pins. Definitely take some notes on that. But I'll see you guys next time. Uh, chill. Maybe eat a sandwich today. <laughs>